Why, dude? Why am I so tired? Because you drove in traffic? Uh, no. I, d- I did get mad. I got mad. Uh, here we go. I'll wait. <laughs> clink, clank, clink, clank. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I did. I did. I got mad. At, uh, there's a there's a street in Brentwood. <laughs> And it's hilarious because I was on my way to my therapy appointment because, you know, people need therapy. Everybody needs therapy. You both need therapy. I don't care. I don't know you that well, man. No, no, no. It's true. (laughs) So I'm on my way to my therapy appointment. There's a street. There's three lanes. The lane in the left has to turn left up there at this light. And everybody knows good and damn well that that lane has turned. But what do they do? They run up that lane and get over. Mm Mm-hmm. So the, I'm it's like, it's like the Mumbrian going on 65 South. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So I'm in the middle lane and I'm trucking. I'm like, I got this. I'm going. Nobody's here. There's a car in front of me. There's nobody behind me. This car runs up and starts coming over, then puts his turn signal on. And I, I'm, I have to slam on the brakes. So <laughs> the finger came out. <laughs> As it should. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to be better about this. So the finger comes out, and they've got blacked out windows. I'm like, I, I'm over it. So I jump yeah, so in the right lane. you don't know if lane. you're dealing with like one person, I, I don't know, five people. I, at that point, I didn't care. I ran up the right lane, got beside of them, rolled my window down, told them exactly what I thought about their driving, and then dropped back behind them, got back in just to screw with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulled that. I went top gun on them. You just... <laughs> <laughs> breaks back behind them and followed them for a little while just to give them that in their head that this dude is nuts. Well, it's more like a uh, Christmas vacation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the opening scene. What you got to do the next time is the, the ultimate move is when something like that, you kind of pull next to him and you put your, you put your, cheek against the window and like close one eye so it kind of looks like you're asleep and then like hold oh yeah hold the steering wheel down here so they can't see you they think you're just like asleep against That's, the wall i like that i kind of dig that yeah I, I i i let him turn and i went on to my therapy appointment and uh i i told i told the therapist about it he's like really he's yeah because we talk about nashville traffic is something for me i despise it there's no reason for it. We should have more roads. It's so bad. And less people. Yeah. I, 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 I love that everybody came here at the same time for some reason. I've been here since 1998. So I came here and it wasn't that bad. You just didn't go on 440 between 430 and 530. Yeah. You know, yeah. during the week. That's all. You didn't go or, or Green, Green Hills. Hills. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, that's, it. that's yeah. all you didn't do. 65, 24. Oh, that was great. So my therapist is like, you have you give too you give people too much credit. He said you need to expect that they're going to do some stupid shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I expected them to do some stupid shit today, but today I wasn't having it, and I felt bad about it afterwards. And he was like, Dad, I, "Well, did this car like cut you off?" Or did- yeah, dude, it almost hit me. It was oh. like I'm coming over. I don't care if you're there or not. The people here, I mean, they're terrible drivers. I I moved here back in March, so it's like I'm still about like a year <coughs> in at this point. And granted. Austin, Dallas, they're not good either. So, yeah, like, I didn't no. come from, like, places that are, yeah. like, good drivers. The people here are terrible well, Houston, drivers. Houston's not much better either. No, no. Houston is just your gridlocked everywhere you go. What, I, what I've noticed every time I go back to Texas to visit family, like, everyone drives really fast. Oh, yeah. Way much faster than Speed we, limits like except 85. for 24, because yeah. 24, like, it's literally like being on the set of Fast and the Furious. Yeah. But other than that. Literally. <laughs> well, I've, I've, had, I've had to watch that here where I'm going, like, 10, 15 miles over the speed limit just by, like, like habit yeah it's like, okay. muscle memory. you look yeah. down and i'm doing 90 and i'm like ah, i don't need to be well, we used to live we don't live there anymore we used to live on west end and that is just like not only are the like drivers bad but the the people are bad like there's just jaywalking everywhere <laughs> oh, you yeah. go so yeah. it's just like people are playing frogger out there like when you're driving it's like <laughs> geez my god i have a right to cross the road like well you also have the right to get a hip yeah. replacement yeah. too <laughs> we're all <laughs> slick yeah come on daddy <laughs> welcome to twang town i am david tolliver Colt Mursky. Tall Mursky. Yeah. Today we have... Matt Stubbs. Matt Stubbs. I, manager extraordinaire. Uh, I, 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 Honestly, I usually do my research before we have a guest come in, but I ain't done shit. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's nothing, there's nothing David to David had research, a, a late co-write. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah you know. I had a late co-write. 1 p.m. start, man. That's uh-huh. hard for me, dude. I have a routine. If I get out of my routine, I go to gym in the morning, breakfast, right... Well, I'll go hike if, I, if the ride is at 11. 
Then I'll, you know, go right, come home, and watch Friends. Yeah, it's not a good routine. Friends. Yeah. I don't watch Friends. I don't know why I say Friends. <laughs> you totally watch Friends. I don't. I go home, and it's usually Big, big Bang Theory comes on eventually. It's yeah. four claps, by the way. That's what I did. Friends. Yep. Okay, just making sure. It's one of the go-tos. Because I yeah. argued with Jenna, because I was like, it's five. I'm a musician. It's not five claps. It's four. She was right. Yeah. You hear that, honey? You were right. You were always <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I feel like Friends is one of those shows where if pe- people know their stuff, so if like if you're wrong about something, they will let you know that you're wrong Just about die something. Hard, right? Yeah. yeah. So we we went to Florida. Uh, I'm friends with a Backstreet Boy, uh, Brian Littrell, and it is literal. It's not Littrell. Literally? I got corrected. Literally, it's literal. Mm. His wife had a th- Friends theme birthday party. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, I didn't yeah. know it was such a is such a, a it's like a movement. Yeah. Like, like oh, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. you go to some of those like trivia nights that do like special things. Like uh, I'm not one, but like my sister is big into it and stuff like that. So we went with one one time, and they're asking the most obscure questions. Like who? What was their favorite color on this day what? in this episode? It's like I don't know how you're supposed to no know way. that stuff. But yeah, crazy. She was like, "You're my lobster," and I'm like, "What the fuck does that mean?" <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That sounds awful. So welcome, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, I know we got on a little friends tangent there, and none of us even uh, really watched the, the show. But there we go. There'll be tangents, a lot of <laughs> tangents and signs and all those things that I never did pay attention to. So you 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 you're born in Texas? I was. Yeah, I was born and raised in Houston for uh, I, I pretty much every city in texas I, I lived in for a little bit born and raised in houston for a while um went to school at the university of texas in austin yeah. and stayed there for uh, about a decade and then did a tiny tiny brief stint in dallas for two years and here i am in nashville so nice yeah huh. new resident how did you get up here well um i was always planning on moving eventually just being in the business and stuff like that i mean we working from texas had a lot of benefits for sure to where it's like you kind of get to be away and escape it whenever you want and and that type of stuff. And also, I mean, you know, Austin is also a pretty big music town as well. So it's really yeah. cool. I, yeah. Austin's amazing. I had, I had played a little bit through there, but Jen and I went, uh, she had to go down for work or something. And I went down with her and it was, it's just a cool, cool city. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Uh, it's really hot. Best. Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I grew up with it though, you know, yeah. so like you don't even notice and especially within Houston where it's just like, cool. So, so humid. humid. Yeah. Lord. So it's, I, mean, I never, you, you don't even notice. Houston's huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, it's like you it takes you a while to get across it, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, even like I mean, <laughs> when you grow up there, you're in your own little pocket, right? So like you don't you don't leave. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, when you start to go downtown or stuff like that, it's like, oh, yeah, it's going to take me 45 minutes to get to Houston. Yeah. I live <laughs> to get to Houston. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I, was, I, went, to, I went down, I flew down and, and my cousin lives down there. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm here. So I'll just come meet you for lunch. He goes, bro, it's going to take you an hour and a half yep. to get to me. Oh, yeah. He was across town. I'm like, oh, that yeah. sounds really weird oh yeah and we were like i mean we're in houston but we're still a little bit on the outskirts kind of closer to katie like stuff like that so you're kind of able to to get out a little bit there and then within your own little pockets it's really easy navigating that's where all your friends grow up and your neighbors and stuff like that so like you don't really get that big city feel while you're growing up there but i'm obviously biased for the people that don't grow up there i understand why people don't like like Houston for those yeah. reasons type thing because it is a nightmare in that situation. But what are those damn donut with meat in them? What are they called? Kolaches. Kolaches. Oh, yeah. Dude, but first one I ever had was in Houston. Oh, oh yeah. Those oh, things yeah. are fire. Oh, they're amazing. They're so fire. If oh, you yeah. haven't yeah. had a kolache, go get a kolache. I don't know where to get a kolache here. Can you but, get kolache? Bucky's, you found kolaches think, Actually, there's a place in East Nashville called. <laughs> I think it's called Yeast Nashville, and they're from Tech like wow. Austin, I think. Oh, yeah. And That's they have clever. kolaches. They have kolaches? Yeah. yeah. Why have we not gone there? Let's go. They're phenomenal. We should go get lunch I was, when I was they blown, get kolaches. I was blown away that it was just a Texas thing. I didn't even realize that. I yeah. was just, I was so privileged with my kolaches, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it should be like a Polish thing. I guess it, it is, is a Polish, it is. It's a Polish it is. thing. Polish yeah, yeah. Czech thing. The yeah. Polish Czech, the Polish Texans. Yeah, and they have this thing called the Czech stop um, on the I- Ch- I-35. Yeah. <laughs> the Czech stop. They do yeah. on I-35 between Austin <laughs> and Dallas. Um, every single time you go, it is mandatory that you stop at the Czech stop and get their kolaches there because it's just unreal it's just you don't think of your like, bucky's is the only other place you can get it I don't outside know. of texas well that was another one where i didn't even know bucky's was just a texas thing i was yep. like man we H- got, H-E-B. We got wait, yeah. wait are we talking about bucky's with the beaver mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's up here it's everywhere it's, it's expanding there's, it one, yeah. there's one in kentucky there's a few in kentucky now there's one right at my mom's exit yeah and so when we go up there we had the girls want to go 
to Bucky's. Yeah. Whataburger yeah, is the other one where it's like, oh, man, every time yeah. we go down. So. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so well, I guess the Nashville. No, yeah. no. Did you go to school for, uh, it, it, those of you who don't know, he's, he's a music manager, but did you go to school for something like, do you go for music business? Or? I did go for music business, and um, but my journey there is pretty significantly different than most. Let's for hear sure. about yeah, it, man. It's, it's pretty crazy. So, I mean, I was kind of talking with you guys about this before we started recording, but so I was, you know, born and raised like University of Texas in my blood. Like uh-huh. all my, my parents went there. So much family went there. Yeah, hook them horns. Hook them, baby. I did not have the grades to get into the University of Texas. And I kind of knew that from early on. It was definitely kind of one of those things where it's like, I, I love the school. I would love to go. If it's not in my my, my DNA to get there, it's, it's going to be fine. But I kind of accept that. I was like, all right, I'll go to like an LSU or an Ole Miss or, or something like that, kind of stay in the SEC. Yeah. Um, got super, super last minute. I, I Throughout high school and growing up and stuff, I like did choirs and um, musicals, kind of stuff like that. And so I was like, you know, last ditch effort. Let's just try to get into the music school, see if something works. <laughs> so I auditioned on a whim um, to like the opera school there and got in, which really? I was shocked. I so mean, what, again, what, wait, what? You do the opera? Yeah, opera singer. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. But like, I, but you are. You got a degree in uh, it. You you got a really? So I got a music business degree, um, but that was my ticket in basically. Uh, and it was really just because I yeah because I did I, it in high school I, and I had I, I tell you I had every this single is wild. Well, it's wild and I had every single intention of getting in and getting out. Yeah. It's like all right, this is this is my ticket in. I'm gonna go be a business like finance something yeah. like that and just have a good time <clears throat> then I got there um, and I'll preface the music business school uh, at UT and I say UT University of Texas not Tennessee um, I gotta make that distinction yeah, because gotta people make get, a distinction get real there. Yeah. iffy about that around here um, the music business at UT does not exist anymore uh, two years in for me which would have been 2013 they cut the program oh. and so for because like funding it, it it was also through the music school, so like you had to get in through music to do it. It, it was a bunch of stuff that didn't make sense, and yeah. so like we got to finish it because we were already in it, but they cut it after that. Um, so I started doing that, and it was just the classes were so easy for me to where it's like doing like doing these music classes, being in the music business classes here, um, being in these choirs. I see all my friends that are doing like accounting and all this stuff, and then they're like really struggling, and I was like. Why? Why would I change right now? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll kind of like, yeah, kick the can down the road a little bit and figure out my future then. But let me just kind of enjoy college right now. Yeah. Um, so I did it. And I did learn a lot. Like I, I do want to say that I did obviously like learn a lot, um, and it was really fun. And throughout the years, I really started to actually enjoy it. And that's kind of like where my passion of like the music and the music business came to. Then after college, it's kind of like, all right, what do we do now? Type thing. Yeah. I think a lot of kids get that though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, I went to school for this. Yeah, do I go back to Applebee's? Uh, you know, right, no. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. To answer your question, I did go to school for it, but it okay. was not part of the plan. Okay, no. it still kills me that you were like, you know, how I should get into Texas is sing <laughs> opera. That's I've never heard. That. By the way, sorry, Nick Saban's retiring. Whoa! What? Breaking news right now. You yeah, just got dude, it? I just got him. I, that's why I went. No way. Them, yeah, dude. Nick Saban retiring. Oh, holy shit! What is wow. happening? Wow. I'm, 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 I'm a little shook up. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's not go through that rumor mill. <laughs> right. <I> know. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Well, I guess we're going to the SEC, so that's going to be uh, holy hell. Maybe a little bit easier of a game. Dude, now. that's we'll bananas. See. Anyway, I'm sorry. That just caught no. me. So no, I figured, that, that's crazy. We talked football. Need to know that. Yeah. We talked football, so I figured you guys want to know that. So you 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 sing. Opera. So you're still singing opera still on the weekends. Opera. Yeah, and yeah, actually every single night. Yeah, my, my fiance loves it. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Do you ever break it out anymore? No, not in the slightest. I haven't done it in. Oh, gosh. So you don't want to give us a sample to put on the podcast? I don't even think I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm th- I mean, I'm I'm not even kidding. Like back in college too, because it was, I I was in fraternity. I was very stereotypical. Like I did not care about voice lessons and stuff like that. And so like my teachers were did not necessarily love me as much as they loved other students oh, because yeah. I would go in, especially at UT, you know, I'd go on a Saturday, I'd go to a game, I'd lose my voice. Uh, I'd be hung yeah. over on Sunday. You yeah. come, come in the voice lessons on Monday and you don't have a voice anymore. And they're yeah. like, Oh, I don't you take this seriously. All this stuff. And it's like, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of here for a grade. And it's, uh, it's, yeah, so. But it was like, yeah, singing in German and Russian and Italian what? and all this no stuff way. to where it's like, you don't even know what you're saying. You just kind of like write down things underneath just it. Mimicking you know, sounds. Yeah. Making yeah. out phonetically sound, bowel sound. Yeah. 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 I, it was fun. It's I, amazing. I it. it was a great, it was a great, uh, great time in my life for sure. So you, you, 
<laughs> you, went to, you went to Texas uh, music business. Yeah. And when did you come to Nashville? So I moved here back in March of uh, last year, 2023. Oh, so yeah. You, oh, he's fresh on the scene. Oh. <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Running all the dope fiends. If yeah. it was a problem, kill us. <laughs> Sorry. No, but I mean, it, I mean, going back to like your your question, like way like way back was I I love Texas. Like I, I just I'm born and raised there. Like it's it's my my favorite state. I lived in Austin for a long time, and I love that city. And I lived in Dallas for a couple of years, but I was always planning on coming to Nashville. But it was one of those things where it's like I'll just kind of extend my time here as much as I can and yeah. then move there when I really need to. And there was a lot of different factors. It obviously just makes all the sense to be here with, you know, I, I talk to everybody that's here. So it's good to finally put like faces to name for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah. And that's the biggest part for sure. Um, and be, be here like with my clients that all live here too. I have our company is here. The biggest reasons I, I, I got engaged. I was in a relationship. She lived in Nashville too. So yeah. like, oh, that was definitely, yeah. 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 I mean, that was, that was obviously so you, kind of you, the, you did the, the manager expedite. thing in, in Texas. I did pre for, to come into Nashville. Okay. That yeah. pretty much right out of college. So about six years, who was your first client? Oh gosh. Um, so Eddie Claysell, uh, he's a manager at my company as well. So uh -huh. he manages Chase Rice and Whiskey Myers. Gotcha. Um, and I was his assistant, and he, I, I owe everything to him. I mean, oh, I was Chase. Like, yeah. And so he, he kind of groomed me. He taught me all I know. I was part of those teams um, to look, kind of like really learn what management was. Because um, when I started there, I started there like as an intern, and it was really just like everybody else to get a job somewhere yeah. and kind of see. And then I, I knew pretty quickly that I loved it, and I was like kind of good at it, and that's what I wanted to do. Good on you because. <laughs> Did you intern while you were in school, or was this after school? It was school? right after, directly yeah. after, yeah. I did that, and I had like a little side gig at uh, the venue, ACL Live, down there. Oh, okay. Just as an, yeah. an usher. Bathroom's that way. I'll take your <laughs> ticket. Yeah. yeah. See, see free shows. Yeah. I don't know how you do what you do, honestly. It's fun. It's really fun. I, I It's funny, because everyone always says that, and I feel like it's kind of one of those things where it's like, we love it, and then mm -hmm. if you're not in it, you don't, like, yeah. you hate it. Type well, thing. I, but, I come from the artist side of it, and yeah. I understand what my manager had to put up with, and especially my tour manager had to put up yeah. with. That's a whole other uh, story. Whole yeah, other I mean, thing, it's, yeah. it, they are really significantly different things. Yeah. Uh, if you all don't know, a manager is one that does... The big picture the stuff. The big picture yeah. stuff. Tour manager basically is your mom on the bus. <laughs> mom on the bus. It yeah. just they tell you where to go, when to do what you need to do, and they do everything else. Yeah, that's um, that's one. Like if you get a tour manager on your team that like you kind of click like really well with, um, it makes your life so much yeah. easier. And that is very much what you just said. Like I would never want to do that job, no. and they would never want to do my job. So no. it's kind of like a perfect fit there. But yeah. it, it, it it's it's different world, man. Um, so. Your first artist, you work with I work Breland with, yeah, now. Breland's, yeah, he's my, my big he, artist. Is he your, mm -hmm. your bigger artist? He is, yeah, and he's great. I've been working with him for um, almost four years now. About How three did four that years. come about? Just through the company. Um, so we, like, it, it kind of goes, like, both ways. You can find someone, bring them in. Uh -huh. um, you can get assigned somebody. It was the perfect timing for me. So, like, my, my boss, Bruce Kalmick, he, he started my company, Wine Howe, um, back in 2020. Mm -hmm. And so we used to be part of Triple Eight Management. Um, and so they, they split in that year. And so we became one company. I followed Bruce to this new company. So mm -hmm. kind of all this is going down. The new company, obviously COVID, um, it's all happening. I'm, I'm, I'm at this point kind of breaking out of the assistant role, kind of getting um, my feet wet a little bit, getting mm -hmm. some stuff. Um, and it just really worked out to where Breland was just starting out he was kind of brought over um, with like with Bruce and Bruce needed somebody else to put on it. And I was kind of like the perfect fit of like, I had time. I, I kind of had a little bit of experience at that time. Um, and he was kind of my, my first project then that I've really kind of like had myself, you know, yeah. I always had some help on some other things and I still kind of uh, have my hand in some other pots, but yeah, yeah he's, He's 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 kind of my project that I, I work with um, the most a lot, and it's it's so much fun. He's the best. Yeah, he's a good kid, man. He's a talented, talented cat. Yeah, I know his. Uh, I, guess, I guess Jensen. Yeah, still does his, his publicity. Yeah, my fiance works for Jensen, so really? that's, how, that's how we met. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Now she she and Aaron are, are friends of mine and Jenna's. Uh, yeah, we were at their wedding in California. Oh, fun. <clears throat> you weren't there, were you? No, I wasn't. Okay, I, don't know. I heard about it though. It was I awesome. It was great, man. It was they had it in 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 Napa, and uh, they had it uh, in the summer, and they had it on top of a mountain, and it was hot. 
And yeah. Everybody wore suits, including me. Oh. Mm. Let me tell you, bro. Sweaty to quite sweaty. I was so wet on my undercarriage. And <laughs> under arms. It was brutal. It was a great wedding, though, man. They they did it to the nines. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't sidetracked. Here we go. That's how that's how it happens. Yeah. How about that traffic today? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> go ahead, man. My trap. My traffic is way different than your traffic. That's not. It, it is. was sixty-five too. Yeah. Well, same thing. I don't. I don't run into the road rage stuff like you do. It's because I just real... drive a big truck, so everybody just kind of leaves me alone. Yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah. 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 Well, you probably drive slower than I do too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. No. You're just probably real zippy and you piss everyone off. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. that's my, that was my middle name in high school. <laughs> Here comes old David Zippy Tolliver. Zippy Tolliver. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, Matt. Good to see you again. <laughs> so, Matt, why don't you uh, tell us, like, what is a day-to-day like in, in the being an artist manager to someone who doesn't know? Yeah. You know, someone from outside of the music industry. Uh, well, in a nutshell, I mean, everything, you know, it, it, that's kind of like a, uh, it's true. I mean, that's, that's a question, all. right. I mean, that's a question that we get a lot. Um, and you know, there's no real kind of perfect answer to it because every day is just completely different. Um, the way like I like to describe it is there's, there's just so many people on a team that makes like an artist career successful and it, it takes every single person like really doing like their job at an excellent level to like kind of really help propel this. And it, it's our job to just kind of just just make sure that like everything is is going well and going right um and just just and help everybody where it's needed and just kind of like be that common person that everybody can come to also be that direct liaison to the artist um Mm -hmm. all that type of stuff and and you know everyone does it different like we have people like even with our own company that like my style is going to be a lot different than their style but there's also no right or wrong way to do it you know there's no blueprint of like how to be a manager. It's sure. kind of you just find out what works for you, what works best for your your the team around you, and what works best for your client, and yeah. kind of figure it and out. Every from artist there. is different; they have different needs exactly. and wants, and yeah. yeah. And so I just like I mean I always try to just make sure that I'm always available for everybody if they if they need me. Um, I make sure that I'm just trying to be like as nice as possible too. Like there's it's it sounds really silly, but like you know there's some obviously some people and in any business that you know it's it's just harder to work with when when you're not like that, but. Um, we have such a great team around us. It makes it makes everybody's life so much easier and um, and better. But yeah, just kind of being a resource. Um, you know, I obviously am am good at some things and and not so good at some other things. So it's like you kind of also want to surround yourself with people that also know what they're doing, so you can lean on them as much as they want to lean on you. Because you know, I'm going to hire somebody for a specific role, whether it's you know the, the publicist, the stylist, creative director, anything like that, and like that's that's their thing you know not mine so i like i'm going to defer to them and like really listen to to them and what they have to say and um you know i'll have an opinion but at the same time it's like why would i ever try to overstep somebody when that's their job and and right at the end of the day i'm just kind of here to help continue to put all the pieces together yep yep that's that's a good good description i mean you are kind of that that over over the top thing and you just make sure everything yeah. stays in line yeah well, it's like and, wrangling and, a yeah. bunch of cats you for know sure. and keep oh, them all yeah. going in the same direction yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and i love logistics like that's like it's weird i know it's weird but like that's kind of my thing to where it's like i can live on a calendar if i wanted to like i just love kind of like putting things together that's a good thing to be yeah with that and, and so it just it kind of um I, I really enjoy that side of things to where it's like i don't necessarily love at times like the super super big picture stuff yeah. or um you know i'm not as creative as, as some other people like can be but like I, I really know what i am good at and i just try to like again just let everybody else do like what they excel at and yeah. then me just kind of help you're like you're like the the boss <laughs> i would not say that <laughs> yeah. yeah but he wouldn't say it we say it though <laughs> yeah it's definitely you, you you have to boss him around Maybe like the coach. I mean, Breland's a huge sports guy, so like we we'll always talk like sports and coach, or anything yeah. like that. So you know, if he's the owner, or the the GM, or whatever you want to call him, I, I would say I'm probably like the coach, definitely yeah, like yeah. helping like outline a game plan and um, yeah. you know putting <laughs> my people out there to, to win. Sometimes you, you got to spank your artist too. Man. It's like, <laughs> it's like uh, well, well, no, it's Tropic Thunder. Less less uh, Wiseman. It was uh, Tom Cruise's character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dude, you that those was a little actors. Spank their little Dude, ass. Tom Cruise nailed that role. <clears throat> he was the best. He's one of the best parts of that thing. He I mean, was oh, yeah. Jr. so good. I mean, I I remember watching that in theaters, and I didn't even know it was him until the credits. Yeah, oh yeah, where it was 
crazy. I think he fooled a lot of yeah. people at first. Yeah, bananas. Yes. Ro- you wouldn't know him as Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if you could do that now. Yeah. No, if you try to do that movie now, I'm not sure. It would. <laughs> that was that was already. I think, I think the, yeah. the world would just implode. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, people's heads would explode. It was teetering. Yeah. It was definitely <laughs> teetering. Or like <laughs> even when that came out, I was like, oh man, we're I'll, going there. I, I go back and I'll watch it because it's one of my favorite movies. I go back and watch stuff like, oh my god, I can't believe that they did. They pulled this. They did it. Yeah, they did it. They pulled it off. They somehow. really but bought it into it and they doubled it down. They, yeah, but they made fun of it the whole time. Right. But they they did it. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go watch the movie. Yeah. And if you see if you can pick out Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he just got absolutely no flack for that. Like, he man, didn't. No, if, I wouldn't no. think if it would have been anybody else, they may have gotten flack. But so he was the golden boy at the time. He's yeah, Iron I guess the right Iron Man's coming out. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Four hundred years, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so lost. <laughs> I, I will say too, like again, we can go on a Tropic Thunder tangent if we want here, yeah, but like let's go. the the opening of that movie where they're doing all the different trailers, it's brilliant. Is oh, one of yeah. the funniest like cold openings I've ever seen. And who movie. throws Tobey Maguire? In yeah, it? exactly. You know? Like uh, MTV's best kiss or whatever it is. Yeah, oh like. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear lord. And 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 yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, it couldn't have been anybody else. It had to have been Tobey Maguire. <sighs> So you moved here, yeah, this past year in March. So almost a year. Where where are you, where are you living? Where so did we, you decide to go to? We were in West End for a little bit. We just moved out to Hendersonville last week. Oh, oh fresh, wow. like super fresh. Oh, okay, so you are ready so, to get married and settle yeah, down. We got a house. We up in the burbs, right up in the burbs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I feel really? Like it, I feel like people are moving out that way too. It's yeah. I feel awesome. like North is getting is blowing up, especially right around the river. Yeah. Yeah, we're down yeah. in we're down in Brentwood, Colts, even down in farther in Nolansville. Yep. But I mean, we've been looking at houses. It's cheaper to be in Franklin now than it is in Nashville. It's crazy. And that yeah. used to be completely the yeah. other way. It's just exploded in the past since COVID. Then there's the whole property tax thing, which is great. I uh, I don't pay taxes. <laughs> why, would pay, why would you pay taxes? It's Hypothetically, stupid. right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Yeah, not on the record. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you really get to experience uh, some really fine Nashville traffic going north. Yeah, right. I mean, it hadn't been too bad. Like we, um, we were really good about like we can kind of hybrid work from home, work from oh, the office yeah, you type, got that type going thing for too. You. And yeah. um, you know, also like another perk of being a manager is you also can you're always on the clock, right? So it's like. You don't have to come in at the nine to five. You can, right? If you need right. to come in a little bit earlier. You can. If you need to come in a little bit later. If you need to leave and go to a meeting, you can. There's, there is a lot more flexibility yeah. to where like it, it makes it better. What, in that what's sense, the, but. the latest call you've gotten as a manager? Is there, are there have there been uh, some? I mean, there was so the, the latest fire you've had to put out. Yeah, um, talk to us about that. What, what? And not it doesn't have to be Breland, but what are some of the? But the, it's probably the, Breland. The, yeah. the weirdest things you've have to you've have to do, or the, the weirdest. Because I know what we've made our manager do before. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll tell you, the, the weirdest thing is like when you go into the actual um, kind of like the management email accounts that you put out like for like fan service and stuff like that because, yeah, you just never know like what like fans oh, are going to say. Like yeah. they always ask for just an autograph something. They always want to tell you their life story, which is great. You know, that's why mm-hmm. we have it out there. But yeah. it, it is very, uh, very funny to go through and just kind of peek. You can oh, see what's out there, dude. Yeah. And the message requests are the absolute best. Yeah. Well, we used to get um, back when we had like our our office in Austin, we would get wedding invites all the time, wow. and actually specifically for there was always for Chase too. That people wanted like Chase oh, Rice yeah. to like, yeah, be at their wedding, but yeah. always would just like send them it's like, oh, come to our wedding, come to our wedding, come to our wedding type type thing, and it was just it was funny to see. Yeah. I want Chase Rice at my wedding. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to so, renew my vows and invite him to my wedding. Well, here's why. I've I known Chase for a while. and So Jenna and I, my girl, we'd known each other for years, but we met through Rob Baronis, who was the kicker for the Titans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but we never really dated. So we started kind of talking around a little bit, and we decided that we were going to try this. And we had planned to meet up. At the Bitter Ball at the Tin Roof mm. on February 13th. This is officially when we started dating. She had gone out with one of her friends, so I was like, well, I'll just meet you at the roof at the Bitter Ball. Which the Bitter Ball, you don't know, is for all the singles in town. You know, they're in there being bitter because they're single. Fun. So I'm standing there with Chase, just talking to him. 
We're just talking. Jenna comes in and runs straight to me and just kisses me. Wow. And Chase is like, how the hell did you do that? <laughs> like, player dog. We just left. There you it go. It was great. Yeah. But that, yeah. I would have, that's why I would have Chase at my wedding. And Chase is still standing there going, how did he He's do like, that? He's like, how did yeah, he do that? I'm Chase Rice. Right. Have you seen me? Have you seen my chin? <laughs> like, I should have had that happen to me. I'm like, no, nah, dog. That's, that's my games. My chin. My chin. <laughs> I don't have it. I have more chins now. <laughs> so where's your where 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 do you uh where you like to go eat in Nashville? Oh man, because um, you know the music in Nashville makes the or the food in Nashville makes the music better. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. I, your yeah. famous quote. That's my quote. No, yeah. I don't. I mean, this this is going to be a boring answer, but I don't even really know like the answer to that What's question because you? it's like since since coming here, I, I we don't like have. A spot. Well, okay. There is. There are like some spots in, in Sylvan Park that we used to go to all the time when we lived over there. Uh, um, Park Cafe, Cafe Nona. Yeah, Park Cafe Nona. Cafe. Uh, love Park Cafe. Love those places. Yeah, I would say those were like go tos for sure. Um, I when I moved here, you know, I obviously wanted to like try the super stereotypical stuff, Hot like chicken. The, the the Hattie Bees and all that yeah. stuff. It's good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's but, fine. But, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, I don't like to stand in line. I'm for, not going to go again. No. You know, I did it, right? <laughs> yeah. Have we, you found any good Mexican food since you've been here? Uh, no, I have not, which has been the unfortunate part. I do, I mean, Chewy's is still kind of like, you know, being from Texas, yeah. I'll, I'll take it, you know, yeah. I'll take it where I can get Las it. Las Palmas, bro. Oh, no, I haven't been yet. No, 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 no. Las nope. Palmas. No, nope. yeah. Go to Las Palmas. Yeah. The why, food, why don't you like Las Palmas? Because it's trash. It is not trash. It's a delightful family-run like ab- establishment here in Nashville, Tennessee, with the best cheese dip of all time. It's good. For, well, see, for that's, your, that's the problem right there. You just call it cheese dip, and not I'm queso. Sorry, queso. Right. Yeah. So I mean, oh god, it's Texas good for people. Tennessee Mexican food, yeah. but like the closest thing I think I found is Superica in the Gulch. Oh, okay, yes, I've been there. That one's it's good. Pretty good. Did yeah. you just say the Gulch? What's what it's it? called? Have you been to Nolensville Road? What? It's all Mexican restaurants, and you yeah, went but the that's Gulch. different. That's like this local. You're just too bougie. Tennessee Mexican stuff. You don't want to go to Nolensville Road. You're scared. Oh, no, I have been several have times, and even, and even that place off La 96. Hacienda? There's this little uh, off place 96 off by the Kroger over there. It's just a little hole in the wall. You just go in and get some street tacos and stuff like that. It's pretty good. You know what we should do authentic. is go to the little food trucks. You know those would be best. Yeah, they're There's usually one, pretty good. I pass one on Nolan's Road when I come from the airport because I come the back way into Brentwood. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a little food truck. You see, yeah. Matt and I are talking about Tex-Mex. That's, that's <sighs> the bomb, It's different, baby. man. I, it really is. Like, I'm, I, it, it sounds stuck up, but, like, man, I, I miss the Tex-Mex. I miss the barbecue, all, all that stuff. It's, Have you been to Uncle Julio's in Brentwood? No. Why is that um, a thing for you, you guys? Here's why. So we <laughs> flew to Houston. <laughs> flew to Texas, Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And went to some of our friends, and they were like, hey, it was me and Jenna. This is like, I keep referencing Jenna. I'm just gonna from now on when I say we, it's me and Jenna. Yeah. Uh, so they were like, "Hey, we want to take you to our favorite Mexican restaurant." I'm like, "Cool." In Texas, go and get some good local Texas Uncle Julio's. Uh, we have one in Brentwood. Yeah. I I what? won't defend them on that one. They should have taken you somewhere else. Like yeah. Papa Cito's. Like yeah. they introduced me to Kalachis. Right. That was a good move. And Uncle yeah. Julio's is very good. Uh, but I'm if you're saying, going, yeah. yeah, if you're going to Texas, check actually, my all time favorite place in Houston is Lupe Tortilla. Yeah. Oh, the the I was steak fajitas. I really hope you would say are, Lupe Tortilla. Oh, they're the best I've ever had in my entire life. I've been yeah. trying to recreate them for years. <laughs> my oh. wife's aunt used to live in uh, Katy, and uh, she just she retired and moved to Florida. But every time we'd go visit her in Katy, we always had you to get a Lupe. To. Yeah. They they have these people in the back that are literally just, their only job is just making tortillas. And the tortillas are this big. The yeah. The, the, yeah. The, and that's all they do. Just I like that about Chewy. Yeah. You know, they'll make them right there in front of you. That's the best. They have that one woman. She looks like she's, you know, <laughs> she's from the Pueblo she's, down she, in. Yeah. She's been doing it for seven yeah. years. Yeah. Like they brought her specifically to the United States to make tortillas. Yeah. yeah. And they are delightful. We were playing uh, back in, in Christmas a couple, a couple weeks ago. Like we, we went down to Houston to go visit my family, and we were playing. Um, you know that that fishbowl game is like charades or kind of whatever. Uh, basically, just charades. <laughs> and my, it's, it's what it is. It's a glorified. Just trade. call it what it is. It's and when you do hand movements yeah. after guess words. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. But we had three Just different families it. there, all obviously being from Texas and that like stuff. And my, my poor fiance, she, everyone, you you write you write stuff like mm-hmm. to act out for other people. And somebody wrote Lupe tortillas, which is just a hilarious coincidence. Mm-hmm. Everybody, of course, knew what it was. She had no idea. Yeah, she did not know what Lupe tortillas was. And I was like, yeah. 
Oh man, oh, oh. she did great. We we ended up getting it, but yeah, <laughs> that was Lupe Tortillas has come up multiple times. Well, has, has she been? No, we didn't get a chance oh. to go. So that's next on the list. Bad move. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. And she's from here originally. She's from St. Louis. St. Louis. Um, she went to Belmont though, gotcha. so she's been yeah. uh, Belmont in here ever since. Gotcha. Oh. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So we somehow took a tangent on too. Mexican food, Mexican Tex Mex. <laughs> I'm a, the best. I, I am a big fan of Mexican food. However, comma. Just swell up afterwards, man. I don't. I, and you I, don't like dairy. Dairy doesn't like I'm you. I'm the guy that fills up on chips. Oh yeah, I it's easy wear to do. that salsa out. Los Palmas also has the best salsa. Did I say salsa right? That salsa. is right. Salsa. <laughs> salsa. I don't bueno dias. I don't know. <laughs> you a barbecue guy? I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got a spot around here you like? Um, around here, I haven't really found. Um, I, we haven't really tried out here too much. I mean, definitely. Um, I have not been to Martin's actually, but we, you know, Edley's a bunch. Edley's, mm-hmm. uh, Edley's, Edley's is nice. Yeah, they Edley's have wonderful good. brisket. Yeah, it's it's just hard. I mean, coming from Austin too, they're all in Austin. But like the whole like Franklin's is is worth the hype. I've Every, never everything. been to Franklin's. It's the best. And every time I'd go to Austin, it was such a long line. I'm uh, like, I'm just not standing in 100 degree heat for this. Well, see, and that's like it sounds weird. That's actually the best part, and it's like kind of part of the experience. And again, you when you live there, you obviously have some flexibility yeah. versus when you're just like visiting. And um, it, I think it's different now. Post COVID, you can like order and take out, but you used oh. to not be able to. But so so basically. They open at 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. People start lining up at seven, oh my and and God. they and they go until they run out of food. So it usually is around like two or three ish. Basically, yeah. if you don't get there, usually it's around like eight fifteen, eight thirty. If you don't get there by then, you will not eat. Like it, really? they just will run out of food by the time they get to you, type thing. And so <laughs> this sounds awful. No, 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 it's so much fun. But like, you, it's like winning the lottery. Yeah. Though. Trust me, trust it. me, trust me. So much fun. Well, no wonder it's so good. You don't know if you're gonna eat or not. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. So like, it's you, like a soup you kitchen. Obviously, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, you know what you're getting into beforehand, right? Yeah. And so like, you show up there around like seven, seven thirty with a bunch of buddies, like ten y'all or something like that, and you you reserve your spot in line. You kind of, you bring like you bring a speaker, you bring some some board games, you bring you, some alcohol, like you bring some breakfast tacos, like you eat breakfast so there, you're like a line. you're eating you're you're waiting waiting to eat again. <laughs> you were literally tailgating for about five or six hours, just waiting for this food. So then by wow. the time you get there, you know you're you're feeling a little good, right? And so then you overorder a little bit, and you're spending like seventy dollars yeah. on barbecue, and yeah. you're putting down you know a few pounds of brisket. And so how many times have you done this? I did that probably like ten to fifteen times, but. <laughs> Wow, it, it was an experience. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. But you also like that is your Saturday. Like yeah. that is yeah. like if you did it, you spend your whole it, day. It's yeah. Probably a badge of honor. It's like, oh, oh it's great. I did the Franklin's thing. Yeah, there's what's the guy in East Nashville that came from Texas? Oh, that, Shotgun Willies. Shotgun Willies. Try that out. To oh be. yeah, okay. it's good. It was supposed to be. Where's your favorite uh, watering hole here in Nashville? Because we like to talk about Nashville a little bit. I don't know if you've heard of Nashville. I've never. It's heard of It's the it. city yeah. with all the traffic. I've got some bad news. What? So I just had a meeting with one of my people, and they were telling me that the whole Demumbrian Strip right there yeah. is, is getting torn down. Yeah. Whoa. It is. Really? Yeah. Yep. That's They're, like heartbreaking. They, I think they've given them the option when they rebuild to have their spots back. But it's not the same. But it's not the same, dude. So wow. we've been patrons of the Tin Roof for, well, it opened in what, 2002? 2002. Mm-hmm. So we've been doing that for that long and long enough to where we have a table with our names on it. <laughs> so dumb. If so you dumb go but on awesome. table. But dude, that's not cool. It's. I remember when I first moved to Nashville, that whole strip was souvenir shops, wax museum. Like they had a bunch of old celebrities' cars there. You just it, it, nobody cared about it. And then the tenors moved in. Yeah. And then it started getting a little bit. And they had some. They put on some clothing shops and stuff for a while, and that all ran its course. And now it's been that way for, you know, since 2005 or six. Yeah. I can't believe that. It's, I don't know how you feel about this. You've just moved here. But there's certain things about Nashville that make Nashville Nashville. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that character and a lot of that is going away now. Yeah. And it's, I understand progress. I understand change. But damn, man, you know. Yep. It's, it's it's like tearing up Broadway. It's tough. Yep. We uh, like not to compare it like to Austin, but like we went through that in Austin. Yeah. Like I lived sure. there for yeah. pretty much the entirety of the 2010s decade, like 2010 to 2020. And in that time there is when all that stuff was happening. And there was so much change. There was so much like just like history and, and old buildings that like got torn down and sky like sky rises going up. And like you go back now 
and you don't even recognize the city yeah and it's really cool i mean like there's a lot of like really cool stuff but it's not the same and i feel like nashville is you know probably three four five years behind that yeah and is yep. going yep. through that right now yep. it's I, I'll, I'll, I still go downtown broadway and i'm like where am i i don't even yeah. recognize this place i, I can't I, I i go downtown to, to meet jenna now, <laughs> now. <laughs> who's jenna hey, well yeah. jenna count right that's my love no i go downtown to meet her I'll get lost down there because it looks so different. They're building pops. It seems like we drove by a building the other day, and it's, it's like it popped up overnight. I'm like, yeah. where did that come from? Yeah. It wasn't there before. Why yeah. did I get become when Irish? When they first started doing that, they would literally st- start tearing building da- buildings down in the middle of the night so people wouldn't like get mad and wow. angry. You know? yeah. So they just show up to work and like, oh, that building's down now. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. I don't know. Yeah, that's it's crazy. all because of you, Matt. I know it really, it really is. I brought up. it. I brought it with me. Well, no, no, no. no, no. I started way before. You. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely people from California, yeah. New York, and Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Who else do you work with on, on, on a, like a uh, as far as being a manager, like on a, a you know more personal basis? Yeah, it's, absolutely. Um, my my other big project that I work for is Echo Smith. Um, Echo you know, Smith. They're that pop band out of L.A. They had yeah. that song "Cool Kids" from yeah. about a decade ago. Oh, no yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I I didn't obviously work on them back then when that Be happened. Like the cool kid. Yeah, that's I, the one. Nailed yeah, it. dude. Yeah. Well, I used to sing it in the car with my girls. That song. I I mean, put the bias aside. That's a great song. It's yes. a, it's a great song. Yeah. I I I love all music. I I, I grew up on gangster rap. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, I did. Ghetto Boys and NWA and Two Live Crew and yeah, but metal everything. So they're, I appreciate everything. No, they're so much fun, and and I co-manage them with one of my colleagues. Um, and it, it's it's such a great pairing that we have. But they're a fascinating story because like that that song, like I said, it came out. I want to say in twenty fourteen, uh-huh. maybe 2013, 2014. They were all. Uh, 14 or 15 years old like the kids were wow. and they're, no they're, they're, a fam- they're a family band so they're all like Whoa. brother and sister I didn't that's know that. bananas dude mm-hmm. and so even like right now a decade later uh, they're still so young I mean, they're, they're still, still in their 20s yeah 24 <laughs> 25 that's wild yeah and they I are I thought they were old I did too I had no idea no 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 they are they're still like super young and they are the best I mean just salt of the earth human beings um, so great they live out in LA so we don't get a chance to see each other all the time but like whenever no. they do we, we definitely try and I mean, they're just, they're so kind, they're so humble, they like, they love what they do, um, you know, obviously their music's fantastic, and mm. um, it's just fun to be a part of, it's just, it's, I, I love, I love, like, the Nashville scene, I love being in country, like, Breland's my guy, yeah. like, it's such, like, a fun project, but it's also so fun to just, like, have two completely different things, too, yeah. where it's, like, I can, I can dip my hand in that, like, L.A. pop world, well, yeah. and all that stuff, too. Well, you can take things that have worked from that part of it that genre and apply it to the country thing yeah, too absolutely. right absolutely like, i'm sure that's probably what you were saying but you know it, it it doesn't have to be this one formula for just this one thing yeah i mean everything that works in the pop world is not going to work in the country world right but, i mean i'm sure you can draw from each side and some things in the country world aren't going to work in the pop world but some of them do yeah and that I, yeah that's great wow i didn't know that I mean, how yeah. often do you go out to la to deal with those guys um i mean not as often as i'd like um probably once every other month or so yeah. um yeah we, we've got a bunch of like kind of team members that'll kind of pop in so in you, you got a pretty interesting role i mean you you have obviously grew up in the austin music scene and the texas music scene mm-hmm. and then you're here in nashville doing this scene but then you're still dealing with the la music scene yeah that's a lot to keep up with. It definitely is. I, I, work I can with... barely do Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like, and, and Texas country too is like, that's kind of my, that like, if I'm like a fan of anything, I'm a fan of Texas country. Like that's kind of what like I grew up loving classic rock and, and, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, throughout like high school and college years, you love like the, the Josh Abbott's and the Randy Rogers and the, the Pat Greens and, mm-hmm. and that era of music yep. where I didn't even really like. I didn't know Nashville country outside of what you just hear on the radio, like just hearing, you know, Brad Paisley or, or Tim McGraw or, or Kenny Chesney or anything like yeah. that on the radio. That's all I knew, you know? So yep. like, I didn't even know this scene really until I started, started working on it at all. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't something that I ever listened to. I was just super, super red dirt, like very, um, just, mm-hmm. just Texas country. Cause it's, it's so different. Oh yeah, definitely. You can make a whole career out of just playing Texas. Yeah. You it's, they do it. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I you mean, can, Pat green, you, you talked about Pat. He like, what did he sell at the Astrodome before yeah. he had a record deal? Yeah. How we, do we you have do that. We have some artists on our roster that like, um, like that are in that Texas country scene. And like, you can literally tour a hundred, 150 dates just in Texas, you know, expand a little bit, Oklahoma, Louisiana, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And be just be so successful. And like, maybe not like commercially successful. Like maybe it's like someone out here, like might not know that name, but they don't really care because they're yeah. just, 
They're making. They're the making bank. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, I, who's your Who's your most your biggest Texas act in, on your uh, roster? Uh, William Clark Green. He probably so. I don't work with him personally, but mm-hmm. he's he's on our our company roster, and he does really really well down there. William nice. Clark. You have to have three names to play in Texas, don't you? That is true, and you also have had to go to Texas Tech. Yeah. <laughs> Texas Tech. That's so Red true. Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jerry or, Jeff or, or at least lived in Lubbock. Yeah, yeah. one of the, one of the two things. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry Jeff Walker, cross Canadian Ragweed. Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah. Really, I mean, Pat Green. There's someone else. I'm Pat has too. a middle name. I just don't know what it is. Who am I forgetting? Pat Me Down Green. I don't yeah. know. There's there's so many. I mean, like yeah, Ke- Kevin Fowler. I mean, uh, Roger Krieger, Corey, Randy Rogers. Yeah. Oh man, this list goes on and on. I remember so, we Corey s- Morrow. Randy signed to Mercury right before we did. And our manager was like, don't tell them what you want. Don't say this is what you want. Because Randy, they were like, what do you want, Randy? He goes, I just want a new truck. And that's mm-hmm. all. That's what they gave him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, want a new mouth, truck. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah. I just want a new truck. Yeah. Um, I always used to laugh at Corey Morrill. He used to come up here and write songs all the time. And then, like, one of his famous shirts was always said, Nashville sucks, like, in the form of the Nashville Star logo. I'm like, dude, you can't do that. You can't come up here and write all your songs and take them back down to Texas. Why not? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So what, what is what is your, the rest of this year? Well, I guess we're, we're the first of the year Yeah, now. what's the rest of your year looking like? Yeah, Jesus. right. So, you know, we're coming up yeah. on the holiday, right? What do you got going on this, I mean, this this spring and summer? You yeah, got some big I mean, stuff happening? Yeah, I'll take the opportunity to plug Breland for sure. Well, I mean, like, it's, that. It is, it's going to be an awesome, awesome year for us. And, you know, I, I don't really have any specifics to give right at this very moment, but like we we're gonna have some new music for sure at, at awesome. some point and a good amount of it too. Um, he's he, he just kills it on the roads. So we're gonna continue touring out there, and we have a lot of really really exciting stuff. And um, you know, two years ago he had his debut album, and we were getting all the looks in the world, and uh, it was so much fun, and we're, we're so grateful and blessed for everything that like we've we've gotten. And you know, he he obviously is such like a talented person and uh, amazing human too, and. Last year was great. You know, last year was just kind of a year of um, let's just continue doing what we're doing. And, and this year is really we're, we're looking forward to taking it to the next level. For That's sure. Awesome, dude. So, did Chevy give him a new truck? He did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he killed that. Yeah. Is that all he wants? Uh, I mean, Chevy, Chevy is they've been great. They have been amazing partners. Can I have a new truck? Let me talk to our uh, our people. We'll see what we can do. Maybe Breland has yeah, one. He's not driving too much anymore. Yeah, does Breland have an old truck that I can have? We had, you know, we had to we had to switch it in, but uh, yeah. we'll see what we can do. Maybe That's go back great. out there and grab it back. That's fine, Matt. It's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, you you got socials? Can you tell people where you they can find you? I do. My Instagram is Stubbs one one two two Stubbs. Um, the, the one one two two means nothing. It's just you know it was there. It was just there. It was numbers. available. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pretty pretty much. Yeah, uh, and I, I I mean I'm only really on Instagram. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I got. I mean I just it popped in my head. My first dog had three legs. His name was Stubbs. There we go. There yeah. it is. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you're welcome. And I love it. I mean, I've, I've growing up, I was only called Stubbs. No one ever yeah. called Matt or anything sure. like that. So yeah. I've been... it should have been Stubb because he had three legs, but he had one Stubb. Stubb. Stubby could have made it cute. Well, yeah, yeah, I didn't. True. I was young. I didn't know. I was stupid. I was a stupid kid in East Kentucky. You know? <laughs> it happens. I can't help. It happens it. a lot up there. Uh, what else I'm you got, serious. bud? Tall Brewski. Well, um, there's always the wheel of shame. There is. You ready for that? All right. Yeah, <sighs> I think so. I meant to bring those hot sauces in. Oh, yeah. I need to do it. So, my uh, Jenna's mom and dad for Christmas got me the the torchbearer, like the hot ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The twelve. Mm-hmm. And her dad and I sat down at the kitchen table this over Christmas, and we did a video, and we did all twelve. Do you ever watch the show The Hot Ones on uh, YouTube? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was yeah. very and similar you, to you that. Did all twelve. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's David one. Stop talking. One there's point. one. Me a clip of the called. I'll show it to you after this. There's one called the Garlic Reaper. Lived up it's to the like, name. It's like it's like two and a half, three million Scoville. Right. I've never experienced pain. That's pain in yeah, my mouth. Straight pain. I mean, I am just. I'm. I can't talk. Oh I'm like gosh. it won't. And it won't go away. I just kept saying it, it won't go away. And her dad's over here just. It's real hot. <laughs> he's real was, hot. He took it like really good. He's he was dying inside. On the inside, like you were visibly dying on the I outside. Was, he was, was just kind of like, you know, he was yeah. stoic about it. He's like, ah, okay. he's like, I hit the throat. I'm like, yeah, a hammer. 
It was awful. Oh my but, gosh. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Well, I'm being not, a Texas guy, how's how's your hot sauce intake level? I I you know, it this is actually kind of shameful. I'm not like a big hot sauce guy. I'm not like a big spicy spicy yeah. like I love like buffalo wings, you know. Yeah. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll do that, yeah. but I'm not going to really go outside of uh more than just medium or anything. I, like I that. don't understand why you go so hot that it hurts. Right, exactly. It, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, I'm for taste. Yeah, but I, I like a little. Fl- but I do like a little hot, little flavor. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we'll the, put like Cholula like on eggs and stuff like yeah, that. Like that's yeah. that's great, you know. Yeah. But yeah, throw yeah. a little bit I on there, Cholula. dab it up a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, what you spin it will shame, Daddy Bear. All right, let's go. I know I've been reading some of these things. Here they are. It's all, all right. in code. <laughs> Oh, that's a, that's oh, a that's healthy a, spin. That, that is a good, a good spin. Texas I felt, size felt spin. Really there. good about that one. <laughs> this was the price. Or is right? You'd win the one dollar. Old well, Smoky, I think. Is that what that is? We haven't had the Old Smoky before. You haven't had the Old Smoky before. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> we had a uh, we had Jared all uh, Jared Allen. Yeah, I, I listened to that one week. today. The smelling salts. Oh man, buddy. Yeah, I've never. I haven't seen. I haven't seen his face. Like I've known him for years, I've uh-huh. never seen his face like that before. <laughs> it was the, I, he got hit a bunch in the NFL. Yeah, I don't think he's ever been hit that hard. Oh my gosh, it was yeah. brutal, man. Yeah, I'm, he's like, yeah, I've been smelling salts before. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, brother. Well, I would like assume, that. yeah, I would assume those guys probably did that on the sideline all the time. Yeah, like, right. But he's like, I've never experienced anything like that. Oh my gosh, it's but you should let him just smell it. Just, I don't, know. Just, I don't know if I want to. Oh, the smelling salt. Yeah, just let him oh. smell the smelling salt. No, you don't want to smell the moonshine. This episode brought to you by Old Smoky Moonshine. There we go. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for this one, honestly. Yeah. For the moonshine? Yeah. I feel like yeah. this is a good spin. It's kind of what I was going for. Yeah. All right. David's, David's not participating because <laughs> Jen is listening. No. <laughs> it's not true at all. Nope. I just I just don't drink. And yeah, you you but, stopped uh, uh, after the, Montana? I stopped before Montana. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. I was doing like mostly dry January where it's like, you know, if I'm, if I'm celebrating something, you know, yeah. I'm going to drink, you know, the weekends. Well, we're definitely that, that celebrating type of stuff. Today. And so this counts. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm I, breaking it for this I, for sure. I, yeah. Well, cheers. 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 And uh, thanks for coming in today, man. Oh, thank yeah, you dude, for having this me. This is fun. This is awesome. Ooh. I had a taste of my refreshing beverage. It's wonderful. This Ooh. episode brought to you by Old Smoky That's a good Moonshine stuff. and Cold Classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's got some burn. You on should it. let him smell the smelling salts. Do you want to smell the smelling salts? I feel just, like I have to. Just now. take. Yeah, just, you just got. I want to see this reaction. We should just have like three things on the wheel of shame: hot sauce, the shot, and the smelling salts. Hot sauce. Uh, you love the hot sauce one. I love the hot. I love okay. hot sauce. Here's what you're gonna want to do. You do. I'm gonna preface you so you don't kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. So you're gonna take the lid off. And don't go full nose. Hold it about right here. And just yeah. All right. I mean, a good foot and a half away from your nose, bro. I went full on nose in it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, <Whoa. laughs> dude, the first time we Holy ever had God. someone do it, oh was it God. Hey. <laughs> oh, this episode's brought to you by Tears. Matt Stubbs Tears. Yeah. Who wasn't Jim Ed the first one? Jim Ed was. So Jim Ed Norman, like long time music row executive, like just all around badass producer, A and R label head, all that stuff. Eagles. You Worked know. with the Eagles from like day one. <laughs> he, he was the first one to do it and he just oh, goes, did he go all the way. He in? went oh, straight up to the nose. <laughs> He took it like a champ, though. He did. Then I went. I mean, I was here. And it was just my eyes swelled. My nose turned red. I started bleeding from my ears. You know, no, just, you didn't bleed. No, but it, I, I couldn't get my nose to stop my running. Sinus, my sinuses feel great Dude. now. Wow, yeah. I, is it, your eyes I'm ready to go. It was so bad. Uh, well, directly after a shot of moonshine, too. I feel like that's like a double way going right to right shock. Uh, guys, check out Matt Stubbs. Check yeah. out all his artists. He's got some good shit going on. Oh, man, we wish you the best. No, thank you guys. Thank you yeah. for coming in here today go, go and sharing to a, a Breland concert. Buy tickets, VIP experience. Yeah, Breland needs another truck. Please, <laughs> please do. Needs another truck. Yeah, yeah. Cole, right. tell us where they can do for us. And find yeah, us. so you can follow us on our socials: Twitter, Twitter Instagram, Instagram, Facebook. Um, like, we're on YouTube and all that stuff. <laughs> Um, like us, subscribe to us, tell somebody. Yeah, we're available on all streaming platforms. Yeah. 
Good talk. I don't know. I can't wait. I can't stop laughing. Traffic. It. People that doing was smelling good. salts. It's just, I went, we need video. Thank y'all. Have a good day. Adios. Been playing down.